meant for an adult audience. Love, love, love line may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion is advised. Love line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Hey everybody, it's Love Line. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number one eight hundred L O V E one nine one. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist, and tonight we welcome back a very special and dear, 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 dear friend. Art Alexakis from Everclear. Well, wow, that's that's all the applause I got. Yeah, what you can do better than that? Come on, Anderson, give it up, buddy. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's applause or someone's frying some bacon. That's the bacon. Now we're talking. Yeah. How you guys doing? Oh, great. We're, we're doing great, Art. Great how to see you. How wonderful to see you. It's so cool. Uh, I listen to you guys all the time, and I almost call in. Because <laughs> when Adam's being a jerk, I, I just want to what, call what, in. What? Adam a jerk? What are you What's talking call about? Well, it's rare. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, yeah. Art knows I'm right. Yeah. He knows I'm this, right. Well, I know, you, I know that you know you're right, because, and, and that's basically the same thing, because you don't even think you're right. You know you're right. Right. It's like... Yeah. How, it's like taking the confidence of a 13-year-old to, to, to be in, oh in your what, what it, late yeah. 20s. I know. I'm really, uh, yeah, thank you. I'm really, uh, I'm really not all that confident a person, am I, Drew? Ye- no, no, here's what I am. You're sure of what you know. I'm sure of what I know, but I don't think anyone cares. Ye- you, do you, no, you don't like it when people notice or care. Yeah, I, I've, I've, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure of what I'm saying, but I, I don't, I don't think anyone should listen. Anyway. Right, right. So right. That's the thing I've always liked about you, Adam, and yeah. I, I think it's natural is that both of us are just supreme narcissists. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we're, we're really good at it. But Drew, what is it you say about your, uh, goes, your, your drug addicts? You, you have this thing about uh, that. Uh, it's it's really the only thing you say that's worth a damn. Is, <laughs> tell me, tell me. Unless you're agreeing with something I said. Of course, that's always good. Uh, <laughs> it, I, I I don't want to paraphrase. I, I would like it uh, from you. What is this? It, is, I this say is a lot your, of your narcissist drug addicts uh, who uh, hate themselves but hate everyone else as well, or something like that. True. Come on, this you really only have like two good ones. This is I'll this have to is think one about of what them. this was because I, I I don't think of it as a good one. I guess. No. Yes. You you, you say it enough. Think of it as good. You say it enough. Huh. Although you have not said it in a while. But it's basically my uh, my uh, ass doesn't stink. But uh, oh, I have not said it well. Go ahead. I'm I'm a, I'm a piece. By the way, I'm, take a take yes, a beat. Take a beat. Take this a beat. this okay. is this is actually comes from a therapist out in the Alma Treatment Center who who coined the phrase that uh, all her patients feel like a piece of ass around which the whole world revolves. Hmm. Right. That that's I've what it is. I've not said that in a long time. Right. But wow. that, that that's uh it, you can feel like a piece of ass and still think uh the, the world, world owes world. you. Yeah, revolves around and you. And revolves around. Well, you. doesn't it? Yeah, that's that's our point. <laughs> Art is uh Art's got many uh projects going, acoustic shows and things like that. The thing I was interested uh, in seeing here is the uh advocate for the uh, deadbeat dad bill and all that stuff. Yeah, that's a while ago. It's I've... been a while, I know, and I think we talked about it last time uh, you're in here. But Art has always been sort of uh, civically minded, and I and I like that. Uh, I like the deadbeat dad one. Yeah, put it this way: you can't get the rappers to get on board with that one. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> this we got to get the rockers on with the deadbeat dads. Oh, there's plenty of rockers that won't get on with that too. Oh, really? Oh, sure. Now, um, what what is uh, what is uh, what's the problem in a nutshell? Well. This was back in 2000 when I was there was a bill uh, called the Debbie Dad Bill HR um, uh, 1433 that started on the floor of the House and worked its way up to the Senate and had bipartisan um, support. Which bipartisan support isn't something that you hear too much of these days, right? And um, once Bush got elected, it the it just disappeared. There was the, the everybody walked away from the bill. They had it piggybacked. It was that means that they they included it with other bills, right? And it was pretty much assured of passing. Why is anybody against any of these things? You know, some of these ones just sound like layups. Like, hey, we just like to get the dads, gimmies, right? To, yeah, who knocked up uh, the ladies to be uh, financially responsible for Next. their offspring? Next, yeah, just stamp. Wow. Next, well, this is what what this was about was that the fact that it's not just people knocking up, guys knocking up gals. It's like 
parents, like like you know, a father of a family, if his wife leaves him, he takes it out on his his woman. Or by taking it out on his kids, of course. he right. gets back at them, and it's not just men; it's women too. But uh, for the most part, it's men. And what this did, um, this took all the mystery out of getting the families paid, because right. you can get a judgment against somebody, and they can dodge it for years and years right. and years. My dad did that. Right. By the by the way, I talked. I went and saw my dad. This last week, and for the first time in 14 years. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah. How was that? Um, He's old. <laughs> God. I'm like, how can I be mad at su- such an old man? I mean, he's an old man. Has he changed? Um, Not really. Um, yeah, He's he's a sweet guy, but at the end, he's just like, God, you never, you know, you've been mad at me, and your sister's mad at me. I don't understand. I don't understand why everyone's mad at me. I don't oh, understand boy. what I did. And I'm like, really? Did you tell him? I go, Dad, um, can I have your email? You got an email address? I'm going to send you a letter. I wasn't going to sit there and just... Did he have an mean, email address? Oh, yeah. Wow, that would have been a... What? He, but you know what? I wrote the letter. Never sent it? No, I sent it to myself. At Oh, oh really? Yeah. We, wait a minute. No, I know. So we want you to, we want you to send right? it to him, though. We, we, no. we feel like people need <laughs> yeah. to know what they've done. It give him a heart attack. Uh, or, yeah. There's no point in it. He's 83 years old. I don't get the point. Mm. And uh, yeah, I know. I know. Maybe we gotta have that letter to read to all the other a hole dads. You know what? Next time I'll bring yeah. the letter. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring like the letter because he won't listen to this. Uh, no, he hates you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Probably doing something with my dad right now. Hey, sp- away from a radio. Speaking of civic minded, I was just on the stump with John Edwards like about a month ago. Oh really? Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I uh, no. He made a for vice president now. Um, yeah. God, I hope so. That'd be a strong ticket. Yeah, what do you think? Do you think uh, it's going to be like McCain or uh, Hillary Clinton? or You yeah, know, a lot Edward. of people are saying like Hillary Clinton. I, I could get down with McCain, by the way. I like McCain that as, I tell, as I vice president for the Democrats? I can't tell if he's a Republican or Democrat. Oh, wait, is he a Republican? Yeah, he's, he's, a, Republican. Republican. he's a Republican. He's a Republican, but he, but he does. No, he's pro-life, man. There's no way he's yeah. going he's gonna to make that ticket. Oh, I didn't even know McCain. That's right. I guess he is. I think it's going to be Edwards. All right. Anderson thinks Edwards too. All right, let's get to the phones. What's going on with Everclear? Everclear, we're uh, I'm writing songs and uh, we're getting ready to put out a greatest hit sometime. We don't have a date set. We got a new song on the record called Glorious. It's a really cool song. I was trying to wrangle a copy of it to bring down and play for you guys, to, like as an exclusive, but couldn't find it. So, all right, it was probably Sorry. next to the letter. Probably sucked. But no, next, I know where the letter is. All right. Well, next time, bring the letter and the CD. I'll, I'll do that for sure. All right. Tori, you're uh, 17? Yeah. What's up? <sighs> okay. I, for the past, like, ten and a half months, or almost 11 Hold on a second. Don't you hate when you're stupid when you repeat someone else's stupid stuff? Like, I didn't think of uh, McCain. I was sitting at a table with a bunch of guys, and we are going, who the hell is going to run over at Kimmel today? And someone said, what about McCain? And it just stuck into my head, and then I spat it out on the radio, not thinking about <laughs> yes. if he was a Democrat yes. or a Republican. I do that probably a lot more than you do, though. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Yeah, all right. He's you rarely do that, so feel good. <laughs> all right. Tori was about to tell us something very difficult I could tell us. <laughs> Go ahead, baby. Sorry, Sorry Tori. In the middle of... Speaking of Kimmel, I'm watching him right now. Um, you got the, uh, oh, you, oh, she's in Chicago. Oh, okay. Yeah. What's happening, baby doll? Um, well. For the last ten months. Wait, oh, crap. What? It's okay. I'm talking to somebody else. I Is think. your mom in the room, or? Uh, yeah. Okay, why don't okay. We, we'll put you on hold and we'll get back to you, okay? Okay. Okay. Right. Hold on. Yeah. I got, can wow, I we haven't had one of those in a while. Yeah. Wow, well, that can usually the last time we had it, she was telling us about how she was having anal sex. Like, good night, mom. Good night. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 good night, Father McConaughey. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the last one we had. Danny. Yeah. You're 16. Hello. Yes. Wow. Sorry, I was falling asleep. Sorry, baby okay. doll. All that sorry. political discourse uh-huh. right, uh, knocked her off. Uh, go ahead, baby. What's your question? <laughs> Um, I was calling because, like, I lost my boyfriend back in September, and lately I've had, like, feelings for, like, one of my close friends or whatever, but... Wait, whoa, 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 you, got, you guys moved so fast past crucial material. What do you mean you lost your boyfriend? Um, he was killed in the car wreck. What happened? Really? I mean, the, the instantaneously, yeah. or... 
What? Instantaneously no. died, or did he, was he alive for a while? Years. No, um, it was instant. So oh it was, it was. I mean, I thank God for that. But oh, yeah, still didn't you, get hurt how like long that. did you go out with him? How long did you know uh, like, him? Officially four months, but like what people don't realize is that was like my best friend for a long time before that. Are you yeah. okay? Yeah. So it wasn't it, like the hardest part. It wasn't just like losing like the boyfriend aspect of it. It was like the best friend part of it. You know. But are you yeah. okay? are you okay? Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah. It can, it can be very hard for teenagers to deal with a, a peer is dying. Teenagers, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not enough to tell you, but it, it <laughs> shatters some of their ability to sort of defend against the, you know, the feelings become overwhelming. The young persons aren't supposed to die. Teenagers feel invincible, and it shatters all that. Uh, really? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I got this other uh, thought about it, which is the kids, it's almost like a, an injury, like they snap back. Oh, better. I mean, it's never a good time. I remember uh, there was always uh, there was a couple a couple of my good friends died in high school. It was like, oh man, this is sad. All right, well, let's eat. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, really, do you really think that you actually dealt with her? You just no, stuff I never, never never dealt remember with your it. opening observations about Adam, <laughs> huh? Yeah. You remember your opening observations about Adam? I know, but I'm, I'm trying, I'm didn't trying get to peel away the, the onion. It didn't here. get in. Didn't get in. There, there, there is that component too. Oh. It just doesn't get in. No, I and, I, and teenagers was, are very good at that too. No, I'm I'm saying, how dare you? I am <laughs> saying, God, it's so weird. These guys, uh, uh, Robert and Lenny. Anyway, those two guys uh, died in a uh, Pinto station wagon. Boom, burst into flames. Good, good times. Oh, man. Pegged in between two cars. Ugh. car just went up like a torch and never got out. Yeah. Um, but the, the thing about it is, is it, it was very sad. I went to both their funerals, but it, it didn't haunt me mm -hmm. uh, i guess i mean i mean what is it's never good never good age to have somebody die and in a way i think better 16 than 26 um yeah it's no, not, it's, come uh, on. You, well here's the point is back well, it marginally might, better it, it might be more likely to get in you might be able to more have the feelings associated with it at 26 than at 16 i'm just saying at 26 you could go into a stupor yeah, if your yeah. mate died and mm -hmm. not be right for oh, wow for years right. yeah uh -huh. damn i i yeah. i know from experiences Similar to that. I mean, well, exactly like that. I lost my girlfriend, who was, like, a year older than me when I was 13, like, Ugh. a year after my brother died. What happened with the girlfriend? She killed herself. Wow. Right after my brother died of an overdose. So I was 13 years old, and it was pretty devastating, and I was definitely self-medicating at that time in a uh, big way. Oh, yeah. So that, I thought that helped. Actually, it just kind of put it off until... You know, later on in life, till my mid twenties, when I got clean, it was just like it all came back to get me. And the uh, the the suicide is is even a a bigger and bitterer mm. pill to swallow for you the feel abandoned. For, the, for the boyfriend and or girlfriend whoever's left behind. Danny, yeah. Danny, do you have a question? Well, all right, so yeah, like, that's I sad. Wondered... Huh? It's Go sad. Go ahead. So yeah, you have like, a guy I now. I wonder, like, how long after that? Like, is it normal? Because, like. I have a lot of friends, like, he was a really popular guy or whatever, and, like, some people are, like, I haven't really asked anyone about it, but everyone just seems to want to put it in their opinion anyway. And <laughs> some people, you know, think it's okay for me to move on, and some people just think I'm trying too hard to move on too quickly. How and long ago I, was it? It was in September? It, it was five months ago, on the 27th. Five months ago. And how long? Six, six months you were officially free to date. How long have you guys, how long were you going out? Like officially four months, but like I said, it was like the whole aspect of losing my no. best friend. Right. You need to you need to go ahead and, and just go move on with your life. This you, was your best friend, though. Your only and boyfriend. To, but were you best friends before your boyfriend? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All right, six months. So it takes six about months. six months usually to get over you know not to get over but to really have completed grieving and uh, at that point it's you, you got to you know you're 16 you got to have a life. He, he wouldn't want you to end your life. I would. Of his misfortune. I would. Hey, Danny. Okay. Yeah, I would have, too, yeah, at 16. Like well, again, both your observation at the beginning of the <laughs> show about the narcissism, and there right. you go. Yeah. There like, you go. <laughs> your point Hello? is, Danny? Yeah. How, how, are you, uh, when you talk about dating with this guy, I mean, can you just start spending time with him and become friends with him? I mean, yeah, and then. I mean, that's like what's happening right now. It's just like, I don't know. It's like, I feel weird about it, but at the same time, like, I want to move on. I don't want to be stuck in it, you know? Like, I listen to you guys' show, and I hear these messed up people all the time, and I'm like, I don't want to end up like that. <laughs> no, I, Dan, I think it's fine. You, yeah, you, you're fine. You're yeah, fine. Just you're fine. fine. If you really want to do this and you feel the need to do it, I think it's time. Yeah. yeah. And it's no 
guilt or shame. No, in it. no, all not right. at all. Tim, Tim, yeah, you're 19. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Good. Uh, yeah, I was just kind of wondering. I'm, I've been seeing this girl for about four months, um, and she's she's 10 years older than me. She's 29. And uh, she was my cheer coach in high school. Mm-hmm. And, Why did you uh, have a cheer coach? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a cheerleader. Wait a minute. Let's give him. A, let's give him a chance to um, to back out of this. Did you say beer or cheer? Cheer. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, he didn't go. For Here it. we come, a trucking in. Bet you, Bet wonder, you wonder where, where we've been. been. <laughs> We're a team that can't be beat. <laughs> I prefer Cause David, we're funky David on Greer. our feet. Get to David yeah. Allen Greer. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. That's the guy. Don't take no jive. All right, so you had a cheer coach in uh, high school. Come on, Anderson. This right. was her. See my finger, see my thumb. We got the ball. You better run. S O C K I T. Sock it to me, baby. My head is aching. My hips are tight. I'm just shaking from left to right. One, two, three, four, five. Cash tech. Don't take no job. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come on, baby. We go to win. Oh! That's a cheer. Baby. That's a cheer. Wow! Wow. Wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, Tim. Yeah, she was your uh, cheer coach in high school. Cause, uh, and you're in college now. Uh, yeah, um, I'm cheering for Portland State University. Um, did you get a Did you get a uh, cheer? Yeah, that's uh, our P- PSU in the house. Did you what? Uh, you get a, some sort of scholarship for cheering? Uh, yeah, you get a scholarship. You get uh, like book scholarship, and then like. Uh, a couple grand for like tuition costs. You know those guys like your one instinct is you want to make fun of them, but then you then you see them and they got big arms and they just rattled off a push up for every point that the basketball team scored right. and they're in triple overtime. Right. And you think, man, eh, I'm, I'm just going to make fun of them as I'm as I'm heading the other way. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're getting their college paid for. Yeah, they're always they're, they're sort of the gymnast guys, yeah. right? Oh yeah. And yeah. they get to just stare up at 18-year-old vagina. <laughs> you know what I want to do? Hold on a second. Uh, I had this idea. Uh-oh. You know what I... One of my dream gig is, is a spotter. Spotter at a cheerleading camp. You know those guys... The ones that, that hold them right up no, here? No, no. Those are the guys that are actually involved. I'm, I'm talking about the guys who stand behind the pyramid. They're not involved with the actual. It's during the competition, and they just work at these camps. They don't yeah, they actually work not the part camps of the team, and they spot like they're for gr- the competition. Are they grown men? Like they're grown men. Yeah. True. Here's what you do. Watch. <laughs> yeah, watch. This, 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 this what this what you do. They just watch and wait. They just stare at ass. Yeah. <laughs> like if you look down, you'll get into trouble. <laughs> you understand? There, there's ass. There's like 17 year old girls, three or four pyramid uh, layers high, and their ass is hanging out. And you just stand under them and stare at their crack for hours on end, and, and you know, until a new batch moves. It's an ever changing batch. Right? And if you look down, uh, you're gonna get fired. So just keep those ha- eyes up. But your idea now, you don't wear the outfit or anything. You're just blending. You're you're the actual you're the spotter you know at those at those uh, competitions and camps they have the spotters dude how do you know so much about this I, I want I see it on like ESPN three you, after you the stay, lumberjack so you watch the he watches content. anything I watch anything weird. and, anything and then I had this idea about a TV series called The Spotter oh. I, <laughs> now listen to this, this is a reality show no this is a this is a real this is an hour long drama crime drama here's the deal. I was one of the greatest male cheerleader and spotters ever okay. until the uh, Tulane Pyramid incident of 1982. 1,500 co eds died. In it. I blame myself. <laughs> Don't ask. The You're po- framed, though. You're framed. <laughs> I, you know, it wasn't my fault, but I blame myself when the Tulane Pyramid collapsed and took out 1,500 co eds. Yeah. Now. I'm, even though I'm the best, yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of banished to working this small cheerleading camp in like, uh, upstate New York. But there's a, there are it's jewels, a there's gems to be heard from this man. Spotter. People know me. No, uh, like people uh, once in a while, they go, uh, that's, uh, 
That's Dirk Moxie. He was one of the best. By- and then they shake their head in shame. The Tulane incident, like I, uh-huh. I just tell them, no, that's. And not- then, then, and then Susie the talks to Dirk best. and wants to wants to express her enthusiasm, and people won't listen because it, it's it's Moxie. I'm the best. You're kind of the Columbo uh, yeah. of spotters. I'm the Columbo of spotters, but with a little He's bit tainted. of like a little bit of the Hulk mixed in. Like yeah. I'm, I'm moving. I'm always. I'm constant. I'm trying to stay ahead of my memories. You oh, know? so you just go every episode. You're gonna go from small school to small school. Yeah, I'm going to new backwater new town cheer, to backwater town. Yeah, high schools, cheerleading academies. Yeah. You know, and again, I use a fake name and stuff, but people people know that I was the best. And there'll you be dramas I mean? going on, little like dramas, little Susie's I'm, pregnant, I'm, blah, blah, I'm blah. I'm solving blah, crime. Town. I'm stopping crime within the dorms, w- within the gymnasiums, as the spotter. CSI spotter. Yeah, I'm, I'm just <laughs> saying, the spotter. Yeah, the spotter. And, 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 you know, Dirk Moxie, one of the best spotter male cheerleaders ever, and then the, and then the Tulane. Wow. Yeah, right, let's finish with Tim. Let's finish with Tim. 1,500 co eds died that. during that. Oh, and I blame myself. Oh, the humanity. Uh, every one of their deaths, I blame myself. Tim. Here we come, a truck in. Right. Come on. Yeah, come speaking on of now. the humanity. This, this is going to be a serious drama, Anderson. All Tim? right, Tim. Yeah. Tim, that yeah. spotting is a good gig. Though, how right? is it you maintained a relationship with her with her so much older than you? Well, how much it's, older? Than you? Ten years. Uh, she's ten years older than me, and it's, it's difficult because she also has two kids. Ugh. Why did you maintain a relationship with her? Um, that. Don't know. That's Did nice. you start dating her when you were in high school? No, all right. Drew. No, no I, no. I started dating her after I had been in college. All right, Tim. Here's yeah. the thing: you, you go to all the sporting events. You got the cheerleader. You got the palm of your hand in the cheerleader's groin. You, you know what I mean? You Chicks need, have a groin, right? You need the right. twenty-nine-year-old mom. Yeah, you don't need a twenty-nine-year-old mom with the baggage. It just, you know. I mean, look. I'm not saying it couldn't work out, but yeah, you're 19. You're on the cheerleading squad. You're in. You're in college. I, I'm concerned. I, whenever there's that big of a difference, I'm worried that the younger person is being exploited. Because you just, you really it's just 19 not, is a cheerleader. You, you just wears a you sweater just, with that tape on his wrist. Is there any point where that that stops? Like if you get to a certain age? Yeah. I mean, if if he if he were in if he were into his adult life. You know, adults are all sort of the same age. Whether you're 25 to like 40 or sort of. They're 28 to 45. Or sort of. So a 20-year-old yeah. and a 37-year-old, bad idea. No, bad idea. It's a bad idea. I wish you'd have told me that earlier. <laughs> so, <laughs> not a horrible idea. But <laughs> bad idea. I mean, just in general, I worry that, that, that there, whenever there's a position imbalance, age imbalance, there's just the potential yeah. of exploitation. And, and Tim seems kind of confused and can't figure out what's going on. on. Just, yeah. just uh, stick with one of those cheerleaders you got your hand up. Hey, you know, some of the dialogue from the spotter might like, like would go like, uh, yeah. Dirk, Tulane was over 20 years ago. Let it go. And I just grab it. You can't forget. You, you know what I'm saying? 1,500. <laughs> just hang your head and, 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 and walk off onto the field. Because of me. We were going for the record. <laughs> Pan back. I was trying to set the record before the kids were ready. Could have been a contender. Uh, and, uh... Yeah, yeah, and then maybe I have a little flashback. Hey, you know, I'm looking up. You can make the show kind of like The Fugitive because there was actually 1501, uh, yeah. but you're looking for that one kid, right? You and know he's what I'm the saying? One that, he's the one that did it. That, that might be the one that, at the bottom. You no, know, he's the one that screwed that's up. That's the one right. that screwed it up. He screwed up. And he but you out. took the blame. You took the rap. Right. Yeah. It was the. Uh, <laughs> it was the. Uh, the the two chinned boy. It's like the fugitive one like guy the one arm man. An arm. Yeah. This yeah. guy had two chins. He was a fat kid. I don't remember his name, but I put him down at the bottom in the cornerstone <laughs> position and he was he was stoned and Hold he fell on. apart. And that's and they blamed me, but it was him and he's yeah, I'm on him. All right, that's it. I gotta go. I gotta work on this. <laughs> this is Could you throw in like a concentration camp or a wacky commandant or something? No, no, this no. is the spotter. Indians at all. But there's gonna be a lot of sex appeal, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, it's very sexy. Well, it's a lot of cheerleaders. A lot of butts. A lot of ass. Right. And I'm, I have to look at it by law. I not have to look. I have to fixate on it. If Cut. I look down, people die. You know? So I'm just there with the boner looking straight up the whole time <laughs> in sweatpants. But that's the profile. That's the beginning. It's like James Bond. You know, it's like the profile, the boner, and the guy looking up. All right, here we go. All right. Art Alex Sakis is uh, here tonight from uh, Everclear in Oregon and uh, many other places. We'll uh, take a quick break. We'll be right back. This week on The Spotter, 
In order to catch an arsonist, the spotter's going to have to become a rapist. A rapist. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, every promo works that way. We, we pick whatever crime, but it always ends with rapist. Good, good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <clears throat> I got some people interested. Be good. We could be a nice fit. Oh, I'm going to be in the USA. room. You're going to pitch it to the big guys. I'm, go, I'm going down out down to uh, ABC tomorrow. I'm going to pitch this and pitch this spotter. Fabulous. Yeah, a lot of a lot of teenage ass, but uh, man on the move. All right, Art Alexakis is uh, here tonight from uh, Everclear. Everclear is uh, coming out with a uh, best of uh, CD with some new stuff on it. We're not sure when though. Yeah, I'm not sure when. It's not slated yet, but it's uh, you know it's not like we get to record all these songs. They're pretty much recorded, right? But um, sometime this year. And why uh, best of? Why not a new CD? Well, I think you know it's 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 a good time to. I uh, I was kind of surprised how many songs we had that were like hits, pretty much hits. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking about and, that today. And people have wanted to do it, and it's. It's uh, you know the record companies like them because they're low overhead, big right. return. Right. Um, it helps them make their numbers for the year, and I don't know. It, it it feels like closure to me for for you know one period of my life, and right. and then move on to a different different kind of thing. I think the the music I'm making now is is uh, not as physical. Not as I don't want to say physically aggressive. Musically, it's not as musically aggressive, but lyrically, I think it is. So it's it's kind of like more mature. Right. I mean, would you would you say in the past the music was d- driven by uh, anger and energy, and and now it's a, a verbal articulation of it more so than a of the, the anger. The, yeah, yeah the, it's, the energy. Part. Yeah, the energy and the anger is still there. I think they're just. Um, I just act out in a different way. <laughs> All right, more All right. focused. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna uh, maybe a guest appearance on the spotter. <clears throat> of course, you think goes, so? Goes without saying. Everclear plays the dance at one of the cheerleading schools. Oh yeah, and there's trouble. Yeah, and spotter takes care of it. That's right. Yeah, that's yeah, and, and then we find out school. that. Yeah, yeah. Tori, Tori, yeah. What's that? And, and, Tori, spot, and by the way, let me see the spotter. He catches people that fall, so everything is sort of stuff like that. Chandelier's gonna come down and crush. Don't you know? Spotter slides in. You know, it's like that. You know, you know. They sound these these work. If if he's if he throws a javelin, the guy throws. You know, you know how it works. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Will he catch someone every show, or is that just? Like- well, he'll have to become a rapist in order to catch. Someone is not a rapist. Uh, each, <laughs> each show. That's one. Here's another idea. Think about this idea. It's real fast, and we're getting back to Tori. What about this? Uh, terrorists take over uh, Olympic uh, training village in, in, in uh, uh, Colorado Springs or yes, whatever, yes. right? They lock up all the Olympic athletes, one of each. Yes. You know, you got you got the shot putter, you got the gymnast, yeah, yeah. you got the steeplechase guy, okay, right. you, got, you got all the guys. Yeah. One of anything. Now, we got to break out. You right. know, the long distance guy, yeah, yeah. the marathon runner, yeah. we got to get... We got to get this message. You know, it's twenty six point two miles away. The phones are out. Go! You've got to make it. And you know, you got to best his time by right, five. It's a bomb going to go off. Yeah, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's oh, using all our Olympic skills. Yeah. The pole vaulter yeah. guys. The guy's going to get us up to the second window. Right. right. You but see, the, what I'm see saying? the spotter could be there to catch people jumping out of windows. No, this is a different, this different show. No, new You're show, right. new show. New show. Well, the spotter could do a guest appearance. Spotter's a series. This is a movie. Oh, okay. This and and everybody and it's called like. Uh, uh, I don't know, um, uh, going for the gold or something like that, you know. And it's all, you know, it's got the hot gymnast chick. It's got the it's got the black boxer guy. You know, it's all the different uh, Olympic sports guys, all trapped. We got to we got to outthink the terrorists and yeah. use our special skills. Yeah, you see. Yep. Special it's skills. Kind of, it's kind of a spinoff of Char- Charlie's Angels. So yeah, there's going to be a right. whole crew, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it's no, it's sort of like you know what it is like those movies like the Dirty Dozen. Like, Victoria's Village. You're the. Uh, well, that's okay. Uh-huh. You're you're the knife thrower. You're the demolitions expert. You're the computer hacker. Yes. You know those most. It's like that, except for it's all Olympic sports. Got it. Yeah. So it's like Ocean's Eleven. Yes. Yeah. It's yeah. like yeah. Ocean's there Eleven. There yeah. As a matter of fact, that's a because kids a good today name. say dirty dozen. They're like yeah. yeah okay. It's, uh-huh. Ocean's, it's Ocean's Eleven. That's right. In the Olympic Village. So yes, Tori, girl? who walked in on you, Tori? Uh, my cousin came out of her room. Ah. Uh, okay. Okay. She, she was, was talking to us before. We thought she was asleep. This, this has got to be like, 
anxiety provoking at the to say the least that you were she was building up to tell us something very important and then you started rambling and then her cousin walks in it's, it's not a, rambling what were you trying to the ideas are good they're not it's not rambling no, she didn't jesus didn't in. ramble you, you, you understand you, you hear me drew yeah yeah you hear what ramble? i said yeah, jesus no, not no, a rambler know, know. you know why because the things that came out of his mouth were pearls. important pearls okay yeah yeah i love the way your mind your mom rambles you understand Jesus, no rambling. Mom, yes, ramble. Okay. Uh, so, Tori. <laughs> I honestly love the way your mind thinks, Adam. All right, so, Tori, you. what's your question? 17. <laughs> um, so, for 10 and a half months, almost a year, me and my uh, stepsister have been sleeping together. How long has she been your stepsister? For three years. How old is she? Same age. I'm a couple months older than her. All right, so you've known her since you were 14. No, I've known her a lot longer than that. Oh, okay, so she's you, see the whole stepsister. Story. You mean you're still living with her since you were 14? No. Well, yeah, yeah, duh. Right, but you've um, known her for how long? How old were you when you met her? Infancy. That's kind of weird, isn't it? Because her mom, they, they were fr- died. Her her mom, mom died. died when she was five. My dad left when I was younger, and... Her dad Our parents kicked in. got together. They were friends. So mm-hmm. yeah. That's why they, they got were together. Yeesh. And but yeah. ever since we were young, we never liked each other. Ever. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I mean, they have like they were recording like one of my birthday parties. We were at the park, and I threw sand in her eyes. <laughs> wow. And right. I mean, violently, we didn't like each other. She just looked at her and All right. All right, to well, get back to her, I kicked her in her shin. And I, I, I get it. Right, so what's kids, <laughs> kids do this a lot, but then they end up uh, you know, effing each other. Yeah. What is the question? Well, I mean, like, I don't. We don't really want our parents to find out. But see, it was, why don't you stop doing this? Yeah, that's the best well, way. I mean, it's we've tried that, Jasmine. We've tried that several times, but I really, we both really love each other. Yeah. And uh, now you guys are living under the same roof. Yes. And the roof is over the same house? Yes. Oh, Christ. See, sometimes it's not always under over uh, the same uh, house. Trick question, I understand. Yeah. The people don't, don't specify that. Tori? Yeah. Uh, were you guys, uh, other than this sort of general chaos that is your family and the people <laughs> passing away and stuff, were you ever abused just in uh, a wholesale way? No. Really? No. Because this, this really just seems like uh, somebody's been abused. What's well, your stepsister? No, not that I know. She, she'd tell me if she was. Well, why don't you ask her? But you were probably going to find that's, that's there. Have you ever been with another girl? Yeah. Okay, so... I've never is... been with guys at all. Okay, so that's your orientation then. How old were you when you started having sex with women? Girls? Uh, Twelve. Twelve. And how old was the, the yeah. person? Thirteen. Right. It's more so just, you know, experimenting. But All right, so, Tori, do you, you feel you're just a full-blown lesbian? Yeah, of course. And, and, your, and your stepsister is feels the same way? Um, well, she says she is, but I'm telling her she's bi. Uh, well, see, there, there could, this could <laughs> yeah. be the cause of some strife for you because... Uh, if she goes off with a guy, I think how that's going to feel. Yeah, and why... Uh, why do you keep telling her she's bi? It seems like something you want to know. tell her. I don't know. I kind of see her as bi. You, yeah. you can tell she's not lesbian the way you are. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of like negative like self-talk kind of. Well, she's yeah. she, but also she may she may really pick up on the fact that her stepsister is just confused about her sexual orientation. Mm. And is goofing well, around but not committed to it. That's true. But it sounds like Tori does. It, do you really have proof that she's that she's not gay, like hundred percent gay, or do you just say that because? You uh you're worried about her not being gay and leaving you. Um uh, well I mean of course I don't want her to leave me but like no, of course not. But I don't know. I mean we've talked about it before. She says that she doesn't want to you know be with a guy cuz she's had boyfriends and she's never liked it. All right. And are are you uh it. planning to go away to college? Oh. Uh, no. yeah. No. kind of, no. yeah, maybe. <laughs> if there's some junior college exchange program where they take uh, goofballs from other states and send them over How here. How about she? Is she going to stay at home? How much range you got on that moped, Rob? Well, <laughs> right now, I just make it out to Kentucky. kind of stay home because the reasons, like, it was different when before, because, like, we didn't really consider ourselves related almost. Until, Do you know? Well... Well, we now have a baby brother. 
Oh, so I see. From, you, from both parents. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so that's now, now that's because... made like some sort of bridge between the two of you? Yeah. In the blood department? Yeah. Well, look, it, <clears throat> here's the thing, Tori. Um, I don't know what went on in the past. I'm just I'm just picturing a, a su- supreme chaos reigning over, over in your family. Maybe before like, your dad he, left. It was all happened because, like, well, my mom got breast cancer. She went away for treatment. And it was just my older sister here who was, you know, looking after us, making sure we didn't kill each other. And one day, like, we just kind of looked at each other different and, like, I don't know, like, she she asked me, like, to scrub her back or something. She was in the tub and, like, asked me just to scrub her back and, like, from there on. Right. Okay. Well, that's the same thing that happened with me. Bad boundaries. Bad boundaries. Horrible boundaries. All right, but here's the deal. Horrible. 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 You two. It's, like, really hard because I... Do honestly love her. I mean, I'm uh, not we understand. Her. I know, but, but, but the boundary Charlie, issues are going to haunt you. I don't want to bum your high, but what are the chances your soulmate is uh, living with you? you? You know what I mean? As I mean, a this teenager, is, especially since she's not gay. No, by this, your own description, this, this is like when your neighbor turns out to be your best friend, and then you hit eighteen, and you realize, wait a minute, that guy's not my best friend. He just lives next door to me. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not. Doesn't mean we can't talk anymore. But there's that part that you guys all got to hear when you're young. And I'm not telling you to turn your back on your friends, but I'm saying you, you know, your your soulmate sits behind you in English class. You're in love with this person. Your best friend lives across the street. All of this is caused because you don't have a car. Right. Proximity. As soon as you get out and start moving around and going to college and spreading it around a little, then you start really heading toward the people you like, you have common interests in, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And these so-called best friends or soulmates or loved ones, it, it's like, eh, you keep in touch with them, maybe, maybe, maybe not. You share a history. Right. So Tori, I don't think it's going to be able to do anything as long as she's living with this woman. No, I she, mean, needs to, no, she needs to go away to school, really. Yeah. Or just go, or go away and work. Just go away. You need to get out of the house. Yes. I don't. I don't think the two of you can live under the same roof. No, and not with and the way you, you've you've sort of blown through whatever boundaries were there. They don't exist anymore. Oh anymore. yeah, and then when you're and, 17, once when it's game on, it's game on. Yeah, true. So as a former passionate, passionate how, man, and first of all, how dare you? I mean, but as a 17 year old, you were brimming with passion. Yes, game on. Yes, as you say, you were like a pressure cooker, <laughs> except for instead of steam coming out of the top. Passion was oozing. Was that passion? from your pressure? Is that what they call that? <laughs> I thought it was cheap. <laughs> I thought it was, although it didn't come out of my sleeve very easily. All right, I have to work on that. Uh, a little soda water get that passion right out. All right. The ma- manual out. Art, Maskul out. Maskul out. Art uh, Alexakis is uh, here tonight. We know him from uh, Everclear. We'll uh, take a, a quick break, and we'll be right back after this. That's Dr. Drew. Dear, 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 dear friend. Art Alexakis is here tonight from Everclear. Godsmack in here tomorrow night. Good times. We need to burn yeah. through some calls. There, there's several up there that are hey, waiting, waiting, waiting. I, wanna, waiting. I got an idea for another show. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. On. No, we haven't had Godsmack in here for a while. No, have we? a long while, yeah. I think, All right, yeah. All right, buddy. Let's get some calls. What do you say? There's like three I want to get to there. Wait, Can we talk to James? Time. Let's start with James. James? we got to keep the cheerleader theme going You're here. 21? Yes. Oh, uh, you're a cheerleader. You're a male cheerleader. That's correct. Yeah. What do you like? What do you think of my spotter idea? That's a pretty good idea, there, Adam. Thanks, buddy. It, it could make it work. Yeah. Very enthusiastic. What's up? So uh, I had a little quick story for you. How I met my wife. And going through high school, she was the uh, captain of the cheerleading squad. And I was the captain of the football team, and her mom was a coach. Her mom wanted me to go do the cheerleading stuff with her. And the first stunt we learned was called a chair, where yeah. you have to put your hand right on their butt. They like sit on your hand. It, it, yeah, it's. Not, I mean, it's it's sort of part yeah, butt, yeah. part crotch. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's nice, nice. Okay. So, her mom, exact words what she told me, was to put your hand right in her coo. In her what? Her coo. Her coo. Her coo. Her coo right between her legs, right there. Thanks, yeah. mom. This is your mother-in-law now? Yes, I have my mother-in-law now. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, how is it? How, Where'd you go to finish school? I thought you were the captain of the football team. What were you doing in the uh, funky sweater with the letter on it? What was that again? Hey, George W. Bush was a cheerleader for Christ's sake. I know. What? what I, how, how but you, you don't go from captain of the football team to cheerleader. How'd that happen? To, to be a cheerleader? 
But you were captain of the football team. How could you do both those things? Oh, there were uh, different times. Because in other we had words, football, we had the football season, and then they so, had a competition time too, where they went like during uh, the summer. So, I got it. Okay. Picture him like on the sideline yelling, "Go me!" Athletes, yeah. So. <laughs> okay. All right. It's, it's okay. True. Is that that's what you're taking taking time away and from? The, uh, my yeah. sermon on the mountain, I so we you can to talk quickly, a-holes. Quickly. I put my uh, I, po- I, I palm after uh, my uh, girlfriend before her mom told me to fist her. Okay, that, that's it. I, I said that's... I wanted to go fast. All right, let's well let's going. go then. This now is Cookie, who we talked to. I think last night. Remember, Cookie jumped out of a car when she saw a freeway accident. Uh, where a tanker truck basically caught on fire. And she Not ran a tanker out. truck. Didn't she say a tanker? Pickup no. truck. Pickup truck. I beg your pardon. Somehow I heard a tanker, and she well, pulled the guy out of the truck. Because you got ears. You got the same ears your wife has. <laughs> and those are. You, 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 if you if you you put a couple zeros behind everything. If you, if you hear if you hear ten, it sounds like a thousand. I you, see. You good. I mean? it's That's just, good. It's a great way to it's, live. It's a good way it's to very go. Exciting. Well, hyperbole makes it better. <laughs> would have would have been better if it was a tanker truck. <laughs> Cookie. Yes. All right, but uh, we were saying you had the alcoholic gene yeah, because, because uh, my mother was an alcoholic, and and we saw the way you managed thrill, the way you were activated by thrill. Yeah, Non-alcoholic, stay in the car, call nine one one, roll up the I window. I thought That's about right. that long and hard, mm-hmm. and here I feel that I have control over my um, self, and you know, drinking in a hole, but. For me to feel that I have As a whole, control, I think but for you guys to give me a sense drainage of drainage. doubt, it makes me feel like, am I going to wind up under a bridge drinking mouthwash? Or? Well, the gene, the gene means you can get out of control with it, well, and if the switch gets thrown, you're at risk for that. You're, just, you're, just having the alcoholic mom puts you at risk. Okay. Yeah, well, so. she's, she's sober now, and she's, you know, she's really supportive with me. And Cookie. I did I mean, you, manage to get out of control, but I stopped that myself without... Treatment or AA. all right. Well, it it is a progressive condition, and it will resurface in some fashion. Okay. And we we picked up on you having that biology based on your behavior, and okay. lo and behold, we were right. You have it, and then we didn't know even about your alcoholic mom yet. Now you told us that. So just the alcoholic mom puts you fifty percent probability of having the gene. Yeah. Now you've basically but told us you've dad, got it. If your dad's an alcoholic too, it's still fifty percent. It's still fifty percent. You might as well both drink. Yeah, but were you raised by your mom and your dad? Um just my mother. Well, and that, a stepfather. The is way higher. No, no, it doesn't. It's still fifty percent. Alcoholic. See that's the whole thing. You don't think just being Okay. Well, it, 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 I having, having, just, having disturbed family systems may make your disease come on earlier and more intensely. But just the predisposition is a pure biological predisposition. And that's 50%. 50%, roughly. How drunk you got to be to punch that mic every night, Drew? Well, you you know. All right, so this is my policy. Uh, When I uh, fart out a kid, if my old lady turns into an alcoholic, I go alcoholic, too, since it doesn't up the ante. That's right. Okay. No, it, it, no, right. it will make the kid's disease worse, but it won't make the probability of the disease worse. Right, right. Yeah. Well, Drew and, said and, it and was if cool. the kid, it's a daughter, she'll have depressive illness, too. True, true, true said it was cool. Yeah. All right. You want to talk? Oh, we got a Germany or Florida. Andrew? Hey, guys. All right. This is a little game we like, like to call Germany or Florida. All uh, bizarre uh, stories, most stories that have to do with crime, emanate from either Germany or Florida. Not just any crime, the, 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 the macabre. That's the bizarre. The bizarre. I said bizarre. Yeah. Andrew? All right, go ahead, go. buddy. You give us All the right. clues. We tell you Germany or Florida. Right. All right. Uh, a guy tried to siphon some gas. Uh, it was in a, it was in like a, just a, reg- I guess a gas tank, and he siphoned the gas, but I guess he sucked at siphoning gas, and he choked on it. Mm-hmm. He ended up getting a stomach ache. Then he realized it wasn't actually hooked up to gas. He had accidentally siphoned uh, sewage water. Nice. Oh, good times. Uh huh. So he he thought he was siphoning gas out of a, a storage tank at like a gas station, <laughs> and he was in the sewage. Yeah, right. right. Mm-hmm. But he accidentally, like, I guess, put it in the wrong thing, and it ended up being a sewage tank. Right. And right. He, so he got a mouthful of sewage. Right. Yeah, and found him four hours later, and he was just, I guess, like... Uh, All right. Th- this this feels like Florida to me. Feels although like, gas like is more expensive in, yeah. in Europe, although it's going up here. You think, think about it. Where in, in Florida are they going to have 
a tank, a sewage tank with a hose. We don't have that kind of thing, really. No, they do, actually, down there. In Florida? Florida? Yeah, in soft in, places like that, they have I'm septic going, tanks. Septic tank, if that's... But I'm going know. Florida. All right, I'm, I'm, I would I'll go, go with Florida. You. All right, I'll go with you. you really? Yeah, I don't disagree. You can pick your own. No. Andrew, what is it? Florida. Uh, it's Florida. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. See, see yeah. I know what I know the right. And that's how you that's how you play Germany yeah. or Florida, my friend. Good time. Thank you. Good yeah. time. Good time. <laughs> and this is why Drew and I compliment each other so much. That's right. Adam talks. And I say, Adam, that you're doing a great job. And then I yell at him, compliment me. You did a great job. I've never seen you guys better together, actually. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. See. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Art, and Art's been here many, many times. Sixteen times. Really? Yeah, at least. At least. Uh, hold on. And that's enough now. Come on now. There's other people out there want to do the show. Oh, great. Fine. <laughs> Here we uh, go. Hurt my that. feelings. Art Here we Alex go. Alex, everybody. We'll uh, take ourselves a quick break. Dear, dear, dear friend, take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, blah, 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 blah. Art Oxakis, dear, 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 dear friend, on the show tonight from Everclear, of course. You can uh, look out for that uh, best of uh, CD. And, uh, yeah, thinking about uh, thinking about uh, Everclear while I was walking up my stairs today, thinking, a lot of hits. Yeah, yeah. A lot of hits. And uh, yeah. Drew's thinking, uh, Chris the Engineer's not in the room. Yeah, yeah. thinking that too. Yeah. Chris and I are uh, become is. so close uh, over the years that when Drew said, uh, where's Chris, I said, who? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd have one of the callers. <laughs> yeah. There and he you is, finally, you finally registered and you went, eh, what are you going to do? Yeah. He's, uh, he's the, uh, the uh, strong but silent type uh, yeah, yeah. engineer, Chris. Yes, yes, yes. He, he, he is, uh, he's like a uh, Navy SEAL. You know, He'd come in under cover of darkness, cut your throat with piano wire and be out. Climbing that rope to Not the a helicopter, ripple in the water. and then had a ripple in the water. You wouldn't even know he was there. Stealthy. They call him uh, the the uh, Black Panther. <laughs> you know what I mean? Be up in that tree, pounce on you. You wouldn't even know it hits you. Carrie. Yes. You're 27. Yes. Drew, hold on a second. What? What's going on with uh, Roy? The uh, he's from walking Siegfried again. And Roy. He's walking. Yeah. What's up? I, I, they never really specified what the injury was. As best I can imagine. Something had happened in what's called the posterior circulation of his brain. Yeah. Which is the cerebellum and the midbay and the brainstem and the motor. So the, where the motor area sort of feeds into the brain. Yeah. How, do, uh, how does this go, by the way, that uh, these things become, you know, front page news for many, many weeks. And you, there never anybody, you know, at a certain point after, after reading article number 55 about it, I, I want to go... Look, what's the prognosis? Is he yeah. is he going to walk? Is is it? Can he talk? Uh, where is he? Uh, well, first of all, the why is it always shrouded in secrecy? And by the way, what's the shame in being injured? Uh, right, is it, there seems to be some sort of shame that's like yeah. you know people like coming up going um. Uh, uh, sort of weaving these tales, these optimistic tales about, I looked at him, he squeezed my hand, yeah. I knew he would, meant he would be all right. Here's he the deal. says to give, how about just tell okay. us what's wrong with the guy? New, the HIPAA laws are such that doctors are not allowed. HIPAA what? HIPAA laws are not allowed. Attacked by a tiger, you idiot. Not a hippo. HIPAA laws. Yeah, okay. The, the, <laughs> no, the, are such the that is very caretakers, medical yes. caretakers, cannot talk to anybody. It's illegal to say anything. To How about faggy even, boyfriends? Can even they talk? Amongst colleagues, you're not right. allowed to talk to yourself where somebody could overhear it. So, doctors mm -hmm. are scared, Estless, to say anything about patients unless right. the patients direct them in writing what to say and when to say it. So, the, the people that actually know what's going on are clammed up. Right. You've got the lay people, the family, whatnot, distorting things, trying to figure things out, trying to have no idea what they're talking about or what right. the situation is. They're the ones that are providing information to the press. Right. The press are taking things further and, and amplifying the, these sort of stories, as always. Mm -hmm. so, it, so, it's distorted, amplified misinformation. Okay. So there's no way to figure out what's going on. I, I have to try to I have to try to sort of de decipher to decode the press now. Yeah. When it comes to any medical issue. Well, when you hear uh, collapse on stage from dehydration, you think junkie. I think alcohol. Yeah, I think drugs. All right. All right. That's yeah. the well. If, if it's a 20 year old guy. Yeah. 20 year old guy. Always, always great. Great yeah. when the guy's got to pull out of a few concert dates yeah. because oh, no. of dehydration. That's drugs and alcohol, right? Yeah. Sure. yeah. Get dehydration. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Twenty year olds dehydrated. Have right. a sprite and get back yeah. on stage. Yeah. You, you remember the day when you used to. Uh, to football practice, 105 degree heat, not allowed to drink water. Yeah. Did you get dehydrated and faint? 
No, but no, I did miss some not. concert dates. Yeah, yeah. I had well, to, I had to, I had to pull fair. out of the Vans tour that year. Yeah, but you were, you were malingering. All right, all right. <laughs> Dehydration. <laughs> Carrie. Yeah. You're 27. <laughs> Why have you asked me three times? All right, baby doll. That's that's what we do on the show. Yeah, I give the ADD name. radio. Come on. I give the name three and the times. number. I don't know how many times you I want, went You want her. birthdays and all that? <laughs> all right, baby doll. She's calling from Portland, so I'm cutting her some slack. All right. Oh, dear. What's happening, baby doll? Is this Adam? Oh, boy. Are you drunk? Is this Adam? Yes. Is this the yeah, uh, drunken just... broad from Portland who's a pain in my side? <laughs> You sound much more suave coming through my phone than over the radio. All right, all right. Listen, I appreciate all of this, but please tell us your problem or we're going to hang up. My problem is this. I have been married um, for about a year now, but I've been with my husband for about 10 years, and I'm going to try and say this appropriately so you don't get bleeped, but whenever I give him oral, one of his testicles completely disappears sucks all the way back into his abdomen, right. and that, that I can't even hold him down. No, and hey, Carrie, to, like, Carrie, quiet Carrie, out of there. Carrie. Yeah. Th- that's a normal thing. Happens all the time. Many men get that. Some guys get it both sides. And it, it, the test, it goes up into the inguinal canal during the contraction. That's why of, I use, I'll snap one of, of those uh, dental rubber bands around. That'll me. stop it. Those that'll are stop tight. It. Those are real tight. You don't need to <laughs> take do the not test. not fall asleep with that thing on. Don't dig the do test. Not. <laughs> Always take it off. Don't dig so, the like, test out. You don't really out. have to work on, like, pushing and prying no. it out of there. Carrie, uh-uh. do not do that. Why not? It will, it will pop out by itself. It'll fall down. All right. Okay. All right. I'm satisfied. Okay. Okay. Well, Drew, thanks, can you guys, stop hey, it from just, going out? From yeah, if you put if you hold it down, yeah, it won't go. Out. <laughs> I just wanted to say to Art yeah, also dental. that uh, What's that? Art, I saw you out the other night, and you are you are more stunning in person than you are on TV. Oh, where did you see me at? Momo's out in Portland. Oh, just out and about. I won't say where, but at a very swanky little night spot. Momo's, Momo's. <laughs> well, it's my friend's bar. Ah. It's the only place I go. Is where, that where he was? Huh? She doesn't know where she no, was. No, no, there might have been boobies involved. Oh, okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Str- but but maybe up. Carrie's a, a, a performer. Are you a stripper? Uh, I'd say she cocktails at best. Carrie said. Uh, hey, listen, I'm driving through the mountains, so I'm going to say thank you guys so much. Right. Wait a second. Do you, you, you perform at this club? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> Although I'd You like know what? In Portland, I'm though, the... I, yeah. I it's the highest for... rate of women that go to the strip clubs with their boyfriends or just w- with friends and just hang out. Heterosexual oh, women go to yeah. these things. It's casual. But that's no, that's it's where bigger. guys are. Huh? That's where guys are. Well, yeah. But it's bigger than anywhere else I've ever seen. Plus, there's more strip clubs per capita in Portland, Oregon huh, than really? anywhere else in the country. Yeah, yeah, man. People will have like a little diner, a little, you know, just crappy diner. You know, and be like a girl stage. right up here where you're trying to trying to eat your you really? know your Monte Cristo sandwich and dip it and stuff. And, and you're like, uh, listen, this is a hardware <laughs> store, sweetie. I'm just coming. In, I'm just getting some toggle balls here. Yeah, I know, I know. We're just you know, look. You put the some eye, money in the can, would you? The IHOP has a stage. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I like that. Oh uh, my. I like uh, I like it when uh, when uh, businesses expand a little. Like uh, I always like the diversify. Uh, I like the car wash when you go when you go to the cash register at the car wash yeah. and you're standing there and you're going, yeah, this car's gonna be another ten minutes. And you're looking down. It's like, hey, maybe I'll buy a water pipe or some nunchucks <laughs> or a switchblade comb. But isn't that some free popcorn? The real mystery yeah. in it. What what leads them to choose those objects? Because that's what they like. I'll tell you, if you go to, there's one in Hollywood that has uh, a mini crossbow <laughs> pistol, crossbow <laughs> pistol. Does like, not. I swear to God, like nudie playing cards, <laughs> nunchucks, like weird sort of novelty weapons, and uh, as well as like the Kleenex, the road maps, and you the, know, air the, the air fresheners, just bizarre. You know what it is? I, I really do think that there are guys who just show up at these places and go, look, I can use, you know, just a... Two feet, two square feet of corner floor space over there. I'll slide in. 
this popcorn machine, and you'll make uh, extra eighty five bucks a month. What do you say? So they pay them to do it. Yeah, or yeah. I mean, there's there's just these guys just stuffing things everywhere. Could be. Yeah, that makes sense. I just like uh, I really like that everything. So stuff. they don't they don't have to have an inventory. These guys maintain the inventory for them. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're yeah. just hucksters, basically. Things right. that can't be sold anywhere else, basically. But it's the, the 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 mini crossbows next to the bootleg cologne, wow. which is uh, next. To the uh, bad jewelry, and then it's really next to the next to the hash pipe, or the rack of CDs of people you've never heard of. Oh, that's yeah, ever. I, I love that. Ray, yeah, Ray Stevens' greatest hits, and just like crazy greatest hits stuff. And then the ones that just have the theme, like "Gone Trucking." <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Greatest songs or to the, truck to. The best one that has ever showed up in a truck truck shop, truck stop, or um, car wash, the Jazz Wolf. Jazz Wolf. Do you know about the no, Jazz Wolf? No, what is it? Oh, I'm surprised you don't know this, Adam. Maybe I do. Is it on no, late night? Is it is on no, an infomercial no. late night? There's, well, then Adam doesn't know about it. There's these. You know how in truck stops you can uh, find the like the, the ambient sound CDs. You know right. this and that. Well, this is a cross between like ambient sound of of nature with um, like bad Kenny G type. You know, oh, smooth really? jazz, yeah, yeah. but like you'll be listening to Kenny G like jamming, and all of a sudden you hear yeah, in really? the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's jazz wolf or, or all the way or through. Or some of there they have like waves going, right? Ocean water. Or something. Well, yeah, there's those too. Yeah. So, so, so it's, it's like you get a massage. So it's, it's like it, the so. stuff you put on when you when you're trying to go to sleep, or you or you get but a has massage, music too. but it actually has uh, that, uh, that the wolf that that gay saxophone, which is more of like a. An oboe that Kenny G plays. By the way, if I play the sax, uh, I'm offended that he calls that thing. You want sax. a berry that's sax. You don't want yeah. an alto sax. Mm -hmm. or yeah, not, that's, not even a, that's a soprano sax. Who decided anyone liked that uh, garbage, by the way? I know it's a, he's an easy target, but Drew, remember we were just talking there tonight yeah, about I how know. much that stuff sucks? Yep, yep. C compared to the jazz that's out there. Like, hey, if you want real jazz, you can, you, you jazz can have is it. Jazz cool. Yeah. All right. There you you know go. what I got? And this is the definition of uh, rape, by the way, for for male, which is you got to be careful when you buy those CDs at the truck stop because it'll say uh, like uh, original hits, and then it turns out it'll be done by you know Papa Do Run Run or something like one yeah. cover band will do uh, the Beach Boys and the Beatles and and all that crap. I got one. This is diabolical. This is orig This is the hits sung by the original artist. But it's not the same. It's not it's the them same. Thirty years later. It's them thirty years later, and the guy's on a Casio. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like. It's gotta say original recordings. Right. This is the original artist, and you start listening, and you're thinking, uh, yeah, that doesn't. That kind of sounds like that uh, grassroots song, and then it's like, but something's different. Like it starts dawning on you all of us immediately. Isn't that the worst though? Yeah, and then you realize, then you think. No, but it's still the same guy singing it, and then you realize it's not the arrangement is different. The musician, there are no session musicians. It's yeah. the guy with the Casio. Yeah. Really, is that what you want to do to your to your people? By the way, trick them, drag uh, the original uh, singer from uh, the guess who or the grassroots uh, out of the office bar stool to cut some crap to fool everybody. And but you know what I mean? Yeah. All right, no. and you know what? You know these are like these uh, pills that uh, add uh, two inches of girth to your penis with the money back guarantee. No one ever goes back. Especially a truck stop. What are you going to do? Turn around and drive 600 miles back? Listen, I'm going to need my $7. You mean those don't work? No, they don't. Okay, good to know. Kirsten? But keep, keep trying. <laughs> Kirsten? Yes? You're 20? Yes, I am. Oh, you got a question for Art? I do. Here he is. Okay, Art, what Is this Kirsten from Washington State? Yes, it is art. Oh God! This girl calls into my radio show every week, really? and she's twice. from Portland. No, let me explain. She's <laughs> this is actually very interesting because she's become part of the show. Wow! She's from Portland, but she's living up there now, and she can't listen to my radio show every Sunday. So she hears it on the phone. So what she does is she calls in. Yeah. We put her on the line, and she listens to it online. She's got unlimited minutes on, on the weekends, uh -huh. and it's kind of cool. And every now and then, when the, when the phones slow down a little bit, we'll go to her and start talking to her. And she's got a big crush on me, but she was telling me how hot she thought I was. And then she, she said that I was... T tell him, Kristen. You're on the top of my list of older men to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got to be careful with those old guys. Yeah, because, but uh, tell they, them who they else could, is, uh, They'll stroke out on you, right, Tell them who else is on the list, Kirsten. 
Okay, Scott Bakula. <laughs> oh. And Mark Twain. <laughs> Scott Bakula. <laughs> Kevin Spacey and, Kevin and Spacey. Ted Danson. Wow. Yeah, Ted but I'm at the top. I'm first. That's an eclectic list, by the way. you got Bakula and Spacey. It's guys with eyebrows, except for Kevin Spacey. It's guys with big Cro-Magnon wow. eyebrows. I, I got some brow. I got enough brow for the both of well, us. Who else? That's, a, that's four of the top ten. Yeah, who else? I never heard any of the others. Yeah, who are they? You know, that's about it. I guess I could oh. throw Adam on there, though. Yeah, I think you could get Bakula, by the way. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, call I'll us publicist. Art first. Yeah, well, see, art, art, you can't get arts. Art's too much man for you. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, but Bacula, <laughs> Bacula's available. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and Ted, Ted, I think Ted's. I don't think Ted's in the running personally. No, no Ted's in a committed relationship. So, Kirsten, what's your question? Um, I want to know what you what you think about the whole same sex marriage thing that just happened in Portland today. Oh, they started marrying people. Yeah, I think it's. Did. I think it's awesome. Personally, okay. you're asking my opinion? Yeah. I think it's cool. They're, who are they hurting? Let them do what they want to do, and I think it's cool for Portland to do that. I was actually very proud when I saw that on the news today. Thanks, cool. Kirsten. I, I Listen, here's my thing. I think the problem that uh, Bush has is with the actual ceremony. You know, the two dudes standing there. So kissing? Or the two chicks standing there. I feel like... <laughs> if you did it by mail like order, it'd be he, okay? No, if he said, look... All, I'll have all the same sex marriages you want. One of you's got to dress up like a dude. <laughs> one of you, one of you's got to put the beard on, and uh, you know, grab a cigar or something. In you other words, I mean? everyone's got to look like the two people on the top of the wedding cake. Yeah. Otherwise, right. not a wedding. Well, yeah. One of you, one I of you see. needs to dress like the Monopoly guy. I can't. put like a top hat on <laughs> and a mustache. You know. And first off, it'd be what funny. is his name anyway? Monopoly guy. Okay. Right. Yeah, I, it's just. I think it's just the actual the community chest guy. Because here's the whole thing: once they're married, I don't think people really have such a, a difficulty with it. No. It's really the actual standing there part. You know what? I I, I have I one have, dress like it, a dude. That's tell all. Tell me, I'm does it? Do you either you feel like that? I have like z zero feelings about it. It's like. Whatever you know, you know what I mean. Well, they were fighting well, that's about basically I, why. Why are we talking about right? This? It's it's troubling to me, but. What? Yeah, I can't even really read some of these arguments I've heard. Yeah, I've, I've, because I just don't. It just seems so ridiculous. Well, it is yes. ridiculous, and the only reason it's going to come up is because it's an election year. I was, uh, but, but are people really going to get behind it being an issue? Um, and and are are people that? Well, you know, supposedly even republic Republican leaders on the Hill are saying that that amendment's never going to happen. It's a dead issue. I can't imagine it would. It don't, yeah. Nobody nobody cares. I was talking to Jimmy about this, and I was saying that, uh, I think he was talking about on his show, too, that we should cut a deal with the gays. Where It's like, I don't know why this doesn't exist in society, where, like, Bush goes, okay, listen, you guys can get married, but we're going to need something in return. You, you know what I mean? You want something? Fine. But you give us somebody right, or something. Like, somebody. We'd like rainbows back. You know what I mean? You guys took our rainbows and turned into a gay flag. We we miss our rainbows. We want the rainbow back, and we want to be able to wear like a kerchief on our on our neck. <laughs> you know, I'd like to be able to wear. That's something I would like to be you able like to that, wear. Huh? I'd like that back. Jimmy suggested parades. Loafers. Like we we went when parades like loafers. Like, yeah, loafers. There's a few. Sure. There's some. There's apparel. There's 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 symbols. A few symbols. There's a few things we need. We we would like to have uh, wrestled back. I'm saying you trade. You, you want to get married? What's it worth to you? What's it going to cost you? Yeah. You know, I mean, this is this is how this country was founded, right? <laughs> yeah. Give us yeah. something. We trade trade like that with the Indians. Give yeah, us you know, you know what they have? They have that thing that girls have that you know when somebody lights your cigarette and you touch their hand. Mm -hmm. You know, guys, gay guys can do that. Right. If I do that, I, I'm going to get hit. Right. We would like, yeah, we would like. Oh, to, I see. You want that? We would like that. I don't want that, but I'm saying, I mean, we. Well, I'll take what I can get. Sure, why not? <laughs> I like the rainbow. I like you the want the rainbow? the rainbow? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Here's a question, kind of off, because I'm running a, I'm running kind of a, I'm trying to figure this out because I've been in an argument with someone about this. When a woman does that, does what? You know what I'm talking about? A guy oh, she, goes to light her cigarette. She grabs and she the hand. Touches his yes. hand. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Is she coming on to him? Yes. Well, no, no. It, it means she's you're, you, you. Is she attracted to it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I agree. It, it, women, women will look as Adam has said a million times. Will look for a reason to touch a guy that they are attracted to. You, yes. That just, that's just sort of they're inclined to touching and somebody if they're if the door is open. Absolutely. Conversely, 
uh, will treat you like a uh, we'll wither. leper. Yeah, will wither away from you. Lesions. Yeah. If she ain't into you, like feel what it's like. Like w- once in a blue moon, a chick has to hug that guy from the office. It gives him the creeps because it's her birthday or something, and they threw a little party or something. It's like yeah. an ironing board just tilting <laughs> <laughs> against the wall. You know, that's what it feels like. Here's how you know. Well, a you've chick, had that feeling, chick. Oh yeah. Oh, chick. As far as that, you get the pan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, 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 like they're putting a uh, aftershave on your shoulder. You know, it's like there you go, buddy. You get the slap. <laughs> the little gold bond. It's the one my step. It's the one my stepdad gives me because he's not. He's sort of robotic and he's an engineer and he's not sure what to do. So it's yeah. always like, uh, see you later, there, John. Uh, <laughs> it's, like, it's like he's making a pizza on my back, you know. <laughs> but it's always weird. All right, but the point is, is if a chick likes you, she'll give you the drag. She'll, she'll, hand, or she'll hand, touch hand with you when you're lighting something. Yeah. It, it, here, they make excuses to touch. Like they can't even help it. Like they do this. Like right. if you, you said something funny, they'll go. They'll go. They'll go. Oh, oh, all right. That's so funny. They'll put the their pet. hand. They'll yeah, pet. they'll pet yeah. you. Yeah. They, they, they will. They will make excuses yeah. to touch, and or conversely. Make excuses not to touch. Yeah, right. So if you get the, if you get the ad, I I agree one hundred percent, and I most men I talk to, and even most women I talk to agree with me. But, here, um, here is the what? only here is the only caveat. The woman I'm that I'm having this discussion with mm-hmm. absolutely doesn't agree with me, but she does do it with, and I watch her with the same type of guy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times the same guy. Ah, uh-huh. so it's ah, uh, um, there you go. Well, but, but you know, the thing about women though is it's v- the, there's always exceptions with women. They, yes. they come. They, there's so many different flavors. There so are many, there. God bless there, them. There yeah. are a handful of women who need to be desired, uh, even if they don't desire the person yeah. that desires them. One hundred percent. Thank yes. you very much. And and that for that person, they're going to touch. She them. will be alluring even if it's with her dad you know it's like that's the only way she knows to interact and they usually don't even know it and they don't know no idea so in that case you could get a woman who touches your hand who has no interest in you because that's her mode and that that's by the way that's a sign of somebody if you knew that she was doing that who would be bewildered if you took it as a as a if you sort of started then coming on she'd be like well where'd you get that idea what right yeah right but if you find a chick who does not do that with other guys, and all of a sudden is dragging her hand down your shoulder every five minutes, she's into you. Good times. All right, let's take ourselves a little break. Art Alexakis here tonight from Everclear. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, it's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Godsmack coming in here tomorrow night. Art here tonight from uh, Everclear. We're going to uh, get back to the phones. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing a threesome question. All right, go ahead. Through. Go ahead. And then there's Tasha down here. Nothing can help. 96 minutes, impression. Tasha. 96 minutes on hold. 103 for Christina over there. Ooh, all right. Well, let's, Drew, let's, you, let's you're, 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 you've been uh, rambling on about yeah. your uh, yeah. uh, horribly ill-fated movie ideas and <laughs> television shows. All right, let's talk to... Uh, Edward, because he's only been on hold for 10 minutes, and so he uh, Christina's been on hold for 104 minutes. <laughs> so and he, he and went, Tasha, huh? we should wait till she gets up to 100 minutes, because she's been on 97 uh, and a half We will minutes. succeed, I'm sure. Okay. Edward? That's uh, me. Uh-oh. What's up? I uh, made this was a mistake. But You're 19? Ahead. What's up? Well, I um, started going out with this girl, I guess, let's see, October of last year, three days after my birthday on the 16th, and... Um, I went, Hold on, I already don't like him with the three days after my birthday. I sort of almost don't believe it. Wait a minute, you want to send a sweater out? Yeah, what was that about? Why? Why did? What was motivating him to say all that? It's it's uh, supreme narcissism. It, that or bogosity, one or the other. Go ahead, Edward. All right, it was just we started dating and then we got serious towards like December and stuff and started going out and um we ended up one of my good friends. We went partying over at my girlfriend's house, and um, we all were drinking and stuff. And and they both had gone upstairs, and I guess started going at it, and I came up. They there. both? That's that's your girlfriend and your friend. Yeah. All right. The male, one, male and a female. Uh, yes. female. Two okay. two females. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I wanted like a. Oh, by the sister. way, hold on. Just to, this is my cut you off. When you say uh, you and you and your friend went over to your girlfriend's house. Uh, you got to specify female friend. It usually yeah. means your buddy. Okay. Yeah. I saw right. two guys walking through that door. Yeah. 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 So, uh, 
So now the two chicks are upstairs getting it on. Yeah. They don't invite you? They just steal away? Oh, well, they'd invited me. I was just downstairs walking everybody out and stuff and making sure they all had designated drivers and all that. So Sure. Get a all phone right. call that one of my friends just passed it on the side Smart. of the road dead or something. Yeah. But anyway, okay. I'd gone upstairs and I heard her, like, screaming. Like, I've never heard the scream before. It wasn't even, like, an intimate scream, I guess you would call it, like, a pleasurable scream. Right, right. <laughs> a what kind of screen? Pleasureful, I think. Pleasureful. Pleasureful. Oh yeah, sure. When when I walked up there, pleasureful like, is like a a forties tobacco ad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather fight old, than switch. Old gold. Yeah. Pleasureful. Pleasureful in every puff. <laughs> All right. So, she so had what a, happened? A pleasureful scream. What happened? And when I walked up there, she was up on the headboard. My girlfriend was up on the headboard, and my female friend was fingering her but like fingering her. All right, hold on, hold on a second. This, this I, a... I love a good fingering story, but this is bogus yes, or you're bogus. just an idiot. Can, yeah, which, this is, which this is, is it? Bogus. Can I go get some popcorn? Yeah, it's bogus. <laughs> yeah. I grab I remember paper bogus towels the second there. he started talking. Oh and some of that imitation butter. On the side. On the side. On the side. So you can dip the popcorn into it? Uh not the popcorn. <laughs> Alright, Ed Edward. Yeah. Okay, this is bogus. Why are Thank you doing you. this? But, Why? Yeah, Why? Did. What would he get uh, out of it? We'll see I mean, you in hell. Did it happen in this? Uh, God, you know, there, is there anything worse than a nineteen-year-old guy? <laughs> is there any yes. any creature worse? No, seventeen-year-old guy. Uh, no, a point, a what? Seventeen? I don't know. Worse than at least no, I gotta say, nineteen's nice worse because they're out of school. The seventeen-year-olds right. oh, yeah. have the excuse right. of still being a minor. Yeah. Yeah. The nineteen-year-olds. I get them all the time. They're the worst callers that call on the show. The 19 or 20 year olds yes. that live at home with their parents in the suburbs. Yes. The worst. Yeah. Uh, absolutely. The their, worst. their takes on politics, on relations between men and women all yeah. uh, are just a skewed. No, they're. There's the guys that become right. the construction workers. Like, uh, what yeah. was your guy's name? Because I used hang to, out used with. To kick your ass all the time. What was his name? Who? I swung a hammer. Mike. With? Uh, Stramat. Stramat. <laughs> Well, that's uh, that's a guy who was worked on a mine sweep in Vietnam <laughs> and was hooked on pain pills. By the way, no worse foreman to have than the uh, Vietnam vet who was uh, did a couple tours on the mine sweep and is uh, strung out on pain meds. Yeah, that's good times. Yeah. That's a great guy. That's a great guy to see at seven a.m. Good times. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, this is a better job. I'll tell you, this dude. Uh, <laughs> Here we go. This guy. <laughs> this guy was the meanest guy I ever met in my life, and used to make these proclamations where he would say, "Look, I'm gonna get." He he would say stuff like, "If two guys were sitting on scaffolding, a couple stories up." Uh, doing some tuck work, some repointing work, meaning take an old brick building on the side of the brick. You'd have to, you'd have to uh, take a uh, grinder and buzz out the old mortar. Uh, By the way, think about a horrible job that uh, is. You buzz out the old mortar just an inch or so deep, and then you take new mortar and use a tuck trowel, just a half inch, half inch thick, and you stuff new mortar what into does that the do? thing. Well. On an old brick building, the mortar starts to decay and I it starts see. to come. It starts to come undone. You can literally take your finger and pick it out. So you obviously you can't take it all out. Uh. You got to take out the outer layer, and it's called repointing. Wow. Anyway, he, me, and another guy just sitting up there, some guy named Doug, just sitting, feet hanging off the scaffolding, repointing. You know, he 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 walks by, stop talking. <laughs> like no, no conversation between them. No radio or anything. It's just he didn't. We're sitting as far away as I am from you, fixing the bricks. He didn't like us. He but, didn't like the co conversing but, during but the be, thing. But be fair, you, you probably rambled on a bit then too. I was. I think, you I think know that's me. What, I'm not a talker. Yeah. The point, <laughs> point is, is he would he would make Mike would make the announcement that one of you is going to quit by the end of the week. I will get you to quit. I will <laughs> ride you so hard you will quit. I'm, you know, I'm not going to fire you. You will beg. You will beg to quit. Did, did, uh, was it true? Uh, he yeah, he fired a lot of guys. He was an a hole. He was a mean, mean dude. But uh, and he'd scare you, you know, physically. But uh, the greatest stories. The only thing the guy ever liked was this puppy he had named Buckwheat, <laughs> and he loved <laughs> Buckwheat. And he, you know, it was the only time you ever saw the guy smile. Like he'd come in, he'd start yelling at everyone, and then he'd be like, "Come here, Buckwheat!" Oh. <laughs> you know, people compensate with their pets. They're, yep. they're colossal pricks, and then they're sweet as sugar with the pets. As a ma as a matter of fact, I hate to say, it, but most of the PETA a holes are this way too. It's like they they love pets, they hate people. Yeah. They're really they're much worse to people than they are to pets. He loved Buckley. One day we're working on a job uh, up right here in Wilshire, 
And uh, he told the one guy he used to ride all the time, Jeff Gaines. He said, Jeff, you watch Buckwheat while, I, while I'm gone. I'll be back in an hour. He took off down the driveway in his uh, pickup truck. The dog started chasing the truck, ran out onto Wilshire. Uh-oh. Mike just turned his truck onto Wilshire and started driving away. Buckwheat got squashed. Oh. But Mike just drove away. And this guy, Jeff, was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. He's going to come back in an hour. we got to, like, replace Buckwheat. we got to get, like, a new dog. And, pay. like, everyone just spread out. It's like, oh, this is Jeff. Sorry, buddy. We're splitting. I mean, you're on your own here. Yeah. I mean, we thought he was going to, like, physically assault him, you know, when he came back. Like, where's Buckwheat? I left you in charge of Buckwheat. No, no worse guy to do that I left you in charage of. Oh, my God. And the dog's dead. Yeah, it's a good time. And what happened when he got back? He freaked out. Yeah, I don't think he did anything. I don't think he... he you were you were not at the site I at that split. point. You split. You left yeah, the site. Yeah, I'm not. The, no way am I going to be around here with wow. buckwheat when you deliver buckwheat's corpse to Mike? Oh my God. It'd be horrible. Now, did Mike run over his own dog? Is that no? Another happened? another car ran over it, but oh. uh, he the dog was chasing Mike's truck when it got ran over on uh, Wilshire. That's it. It's good times. Good times. Tasha. Yeah. You're 16. I am. What's happening? Okay, so I am manic depressive, and I have a lot of anxiety and whatever non-pleasant things. And I have been on various medications for like the last three years and nothing's worked. I'm like at my wit's end right now. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. I, is there any other like form of, I don't know, something to help me besides medication? What are the symptoms you're trying to control? Um, just anxiety and depression and, I don't know, that. <laughs> and who made the diagnosis? Um... I don't know, a doctor from a hospital I've been in. A psychiatric hospital? Yeah. Hmm. And you were in? You were you were admitted into this yeah, psychiatric I've been hospital? About ten or twelve since I've been thirteen. Oh really? Yeah. Oh you're you're closing in on the record. <laughs> yeah, I know. What's mm-hmm. up? Well, you have more than just bipolar illness, right? Yeah. You're what, borderline personality? Mm-hmm. Okay. So that that is uh what you need to think of is that in addition to having this bipolar condition where your mood fluctuates wildly and rapidly between very, very high highs and very, very low lows, there's also a deficiency in your ability to sort of regulate your feelings and feel complete as a person and maintain boundaries. And that's something you've got to work on in therapy. So the, are you getting therapy? Yeah, I go twice a week, but it doesn't right. come either. Okay, well, it, it takes a long time. And I bet you have had times where you're, you've been under control, just you're not right now. Yeah. And one of the things about being borderline is you, 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 have, you can't tolerate frustration and you're impatient and it's, it feels like an emergency right yeah. now. Well, what, what, very what, dramatic, are, what are some things she can do other than uh, go to therapy? What, what medicines are you on right now? Um, I am on Geodon, Effector, and Trazone. Okay. And they, are you on a, have you been on mood stabilizers recently? Yeah. What, what ones? I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> All right, so that's one thing you can do, get back on a mood stable. Sure, I always get trouble. back to this, but how about some uh, exercise? Exercise, classical music, uh, that's a, right. a stable relationship. All that's that would be right. very good. Long walks, put them headphones on, listen to classical music. It'll do it. mellow your mind. Right. And also, but spending time with friends, just talking. People that's who, another problem. I can't, I can't have relations with like, anybody. Yeah, do you kind of, you kind of freak them out? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, somebody will care about you. You have to make sure it's not somebody who needs to fix you. Yeah. How about going to a 12-step program? If you, have, you know, there's something called Emotions Anonymous. Really? Yeah. And that's, again, the idea being that you can create a structured relationship with somebody when you have trouble maintaining those kinds of boundaries. Really? When yeah. did this one pop up? It's, it's been around. I, I'm not it sure. I'm, I don't usually recommend it because I'm not clear what it's doing, but you, Tasha's just looking for a way to have a relationship. After you, you've, you've been talking to people for years, well, you, you give it a cake. Sponsor for, I, yeah, I don't know what the recovery part is in EA. Oh, I can see but, my mom getting involved with that group. Yeah. Yeah, that would be trouble. That's sort of my concern, is that to be a bunch of your moms there, and now what's going to happen? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I think she used to go to OA meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Good that time. was always great. Yeah. A lot of meetings. A lot of groups. Corollas like the groups. Christina? Christina? Sleeping. Mm. Let's listen. Yeah, chicks don't snore. She's only been on hold for 114 minutes. <laughs> well, 115 minutes. All right. This guy's got a quick automotive question. Pete? Yeah. You're 25? Yeah. What's happening? You got an automotive well, question? I do. Um, yeah. 
I have a Jeep with a 5-liter V8 in it. Boring. <laughs> what year is it? It's 85. 85, Ooh, right? 20 years old. And, uh, it's, it's, got, car uh, it's carbureted? Yeah. Okay. It's got a mid-acceleration, well, not acceleration, when you maintain speed, a backfire. Mm-hmm. All right. What is that? What causes that? Yeah. And by the way, I miss backfires. I Remember you see your yeah, backfires? Yeah, all the time. I was, was convinced I was getting shot. Yeah, backfires were, were awesome. You, uh, you don't really hear backfires No, you don't hear them anymore. Because when I hear backfires, now they're probably guns, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah they are guns. They are guns. We, we used to think they were guns. Now they are. Backfires yeah. are when fuel that is uh, not combusted goes down the exhaust pipe and then re reignites uh. inside the uh, exhaust manifold or even the, the tailpipe somewhere. Huh. Somewhere along its travels reignites, and huh. that's what that boom is. So, uh, and I'm not an expert on it, but I did have a friend, actually the same guy I used to carpool with through these horrible construction jobs, drove a VW van. And he could get his car to backfire on cue uh, by, like, he'd pop it into neutral, push, push, the gas. push on yeah. the gas, flood it a little, drop it back into gear, and pow! And he would always do it on the freeway, under the freeway, in the tunnel, mm -hmm. underneath. And there'd be, like, kids walking to school, and he'd just come sliding across and drop it in and just <laughs> boom! And watch everyone hit the deck. We, it was we, good times. Yeah, I had a friend with a Baja bug that could do that. Well, so yeah, what's wrong with, with Pete's? Are good. Um, well, okay, Pete. here's, here's the thing. Uh, the gas is, is not being uh, combusted uh, properly. And uh, and it's 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 running rich. It's 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 using up fuel. Something's so happening. Exactly. Okay, so uh, maybe you got a bad. Uh, you may have a bad uh, Pete. Bad yeah. cylinder. I bet you got a bad cylinder. Okay. Okay. Listen. Uh, pull. Uh, check your uh, check your uh, distributor cap, and then uh, check your rotor inside of that, and then maybe even check your wires. Let's try okay. that. What is that? Uh, couldn't hurt. Uh, What's that? Is he, uh, he might have a cylinder that's not uh, not see. burning the fuel. Right. What does the distributor have to do with that? Distributor is sending the spark through the wire to the spark plugs, and yeah. that. And if you've got a bad cap or bad rotor, the number six cylinder may not be getting a spark. I see. And never ignite it. I got it. Yeah. That's the only thing I can think of. It's something with the carburetor, or something got with it. the uh, distributor cap. Check that. Art Alexakis is uh, here tonight from uh, Everclear. Art, I started talking about car uh, distributor caps, and I saw Art start to wilt. Yeah. Art, 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 Art. Didn't see me wilt. Not you, but uh, Art was like, I saw one lid closing. <laughs> you know what? I, I haven't been sleeping a lot lately. What's the matter, buddy? Um, you want me to come over and talk about cars tonight? <laughs> that was <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> would you mind? In fact, you have to talk about whatever you want, Adam. Yeah. Happy cars. I, that's, that's true. <laughs> no, that's Politics, true. it doesn't matter. No. I, I could. I could I, yeah. You'd be sawing logs in no time. Man, that would be great. I'll tell you what I will well, do if you really. If just it's call, a really just call me on the, on the old hotel phone. And I'll just. Leave it next to the bed, and you can just start talking about, like... High school football story. Hemis. Pow. Hemis. You go right <laughs> under. All right. Art is here. He's going to stay awake for uh, one more break. One we'll, more uh, break. We'll be right back after this. Hey, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Dr. Drew. Art Alexakis is here tonight. From Everclear, of course. Drew up early. Spent my day with uh, Eugene Levy and the Olsen Twins. Putting his uh, fin good times, finishing yeah. touches on this uh, Olsen Twins movie. Yeah, good time. New York Minute coming out. Coming out pretty May soon, right? May 7th or 8th, something like that. All right, Eric says I was wrong about the uh, backfire, so let's just take care of him real fast before we go on. Eric. Hey, what's happening? Tell us how backfire works. Oh, Adam, I love you to death, but I couldn't believe you were wrong on this one. Uh, well, I'll I don't know that much about backfires, to well, tell you the truth. You're correct. Uh, generally, if it's uh, happening on uh, deceleration, it'll be caused by uh, a vacuum leak or, uh, or unburnt fuel, uh, something of that nature. But if it's happening while you're driving at a constant speed, most likely it's the ignition system, uh, ignition system arcing off the block itself, like uh, a bad wire, you know, arcing off a manifold or something. And it's igniting in the exhaust manifold? No, it's it's not igniting at all. It's actually creating an arc between between the uh, the the wire and the metal of the block. And where's the backfire occurring, though? It's it's in the tailpipe. And how does the arc get? How does the arc get to the tailpipe it, to ignite well, it? It's magic. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know the specifics. I know the symptoms and the and the and the remedy. All right, but it, it's 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 un burnt fuel being reignited in the tailpipe, right? But it could be unburnt fuel, but he's still got to know what to look for. All right. All right. You were 90% right. 
Well, I said it was unburnt yeah. fuel that was in uh, that was uh, reigniting in the tailpipe. But uh, all right, and I said that he, You're uh, way off. By the way, way I off. said it was electric. He said it was arcing. Obviously, check the distributor cap yeah. and the plug wire. You say he he said it was the starter system. No, it's not the starter system. But he says something arcing off the block. Well, anyway, Christina, I always like this one too. Uh, Adam, hey, love your work. Can't believe what I heard. Yeah, You're so far off. Yeah, no, this is in the tailpipe. Wow, like you said. And the unburned fuel reigniting. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Well, listen, I don't know that much about that stuff, but I'd still say it was a pretty good description of it. That's close. Christina? Uh, it was exactly what happened. You, you didn't, didn't, he's mad you didn't specify between there are many different mid-speed ways and it deceleration. Could, there's many yeah. different ways it could happen. Yeah. I don't know what that answer is. Christina? She's still sleeping. Oh, yeah. What are we talking to her Just for? Just see if she's awake. <laughs> She went on hold for 125 minutes now, Drew. Yeah. All right. Let's talk to uh, Susie, who's 26. Susie? How are you doing? Good. What's up? Um, actually, my question is pretty short and to the, uh, to the point. I uh, just started um, really uh, spending relationships with my high school sweetheart. Spending and we- relationships? Is that what she said? Well, I- spending time with. I guess so with your with, with your high Wendell. school sweetheart. Yeah. And when did you guys break up in high school? Uh, no, we were actually together until I was almost twenty-one, and so it's been five years. And mm-hmm. why did you break um, up? Because um, we were young. Because we were young. Because we were young. <laughs> what, what does that mean? Um, well, I guess with any relationship, when you're that Susie, young. Susie, what were, what were the reasons you broke up? Why, we, when, if we, I had talked to you when you were 21, what would you have told True, me? True, she up? was young. I understand, young. in retrospect, but at young. 21, what would you have said the reason was then? The reason I would say is that we owned a business, and the more money that came in between us, and as the business was growing, um, Things got a little bit shaky in regards to trust, in regards to... Uh, All right, let, let Susie, cut, stop. Let, let me translate. The boyfriend wanted to screw around and, in fact, started to screw around. <laughs> Is that right? No, True. he would have never cheated on me. Never. True. Well, what was the trust Getting issue then? kind of cathartic then. Uh, it was about the cash register. The guy was uh, right. dipping into... Right. I think... It, I, don't, I mean, I don't really know what... I, he, was, he was a bit more overweight than I was, I guess, and so there were some insecurity issues on his uh, part. And, um, I mean, it got to the point where his jealousy issues... I was coming home from the grocery store, and he would give me a hug and check my back pockets for um, a, a phone number from the bag boy. I mean, it was just absolutely ridiculous. So, so you Maybe were just seeing if you had some candy on you or something. Maybe he was jealous you were around all that food. <laughs> uh, he became very controlling. And... All right. What kind of business did you guys have? Um, I'd rather not say. I... All right. I've had an asshole. <laughs> so that. she's speaking in li- riddles. Ah, who cares? Wrong. Just like, look, here's, here's, here's everybody. You don't have to tell us. You're fine. All right. <laughs> don't tell us. <laughs> I don't care. And don't call. But I'm hanging up on you. That's the whole thing. Here's the deal on this show. If I ask a question, you give an answer. If you'd rather not say, that's fine, but we're moving on. There you go. All right. Let me give one last chance. Susie. Yes. You got 10 seconds to tell us the business you guys ran. To t- tell you what? To tell us the business you guys ran. Okay. It was um, an eyeglass fix shop. Aha! Uh-huh. How dare you! Bra- uh, uh, I'm shocked. <laughs> what, what what kind of maniacs would own that kind of business? You crazy kids with your miniature screwdrivers, <laughs> <laughs> your super tiny screwdrivers. All right, we, we'd rather not say. I know. What the hell is wrong? All right, I'm done with you. You know what I don't like? I don't like people do that stuff. Like, uh, listen, I got an idea for a script. Oh, what is it? Uh, I can't talk. I can't talk yeah. about it. Oh, shut up, you self-important blowhard! <laughs> I'd rather <laughs> not say. I, I've never even said that about anything ever. Yeah. It's either just shut up, or uh, or I'll tell you. But it's not. I'd rather. It, 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 you know what it is? It's like you got a super boring, crappy business, and if you say I'd rather not say, now it's all of a sudden you're James Bond. Oh, it's very intriguing. Must be some. I'm picturing a black attache case made out of ballistic steel, handcuffed to her. To her, she Absolutely. walks through the airport, uh, heading to a charter jet. For <laughs> destinations unknown. Meanwhile, she's uh, can't talk about it. stuffing Wayfair lenses uh, back into it after fat people sit on their sunglasses. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I'm done with everyone, Drew. I'm with I've you. I've had an ass full of society. Uh, for change, today. I'm with you. Yeah. Let's talk. No, to no, Christina. no. Christina's she's asleep. She's asleep. I want to see Christina. 
Best call of the night. 129 minutes. I like to say that. Wait, wait, leave her on there. She may set a record. I don't know what the Love Line on hold record is, Drew, but 129 is getting... It's getting close. I don't think anyone's ever been at 200. No, it was really close to 200 one night. We just stopped yeah. just short. Really close to 200 minutes on uh-huh. hold? Drew, why didn't you get to them? Are you telling more stories? <laughs> Art's our guest. All right. Art died. <laughs> Well, Art, when I, I started talking about backfiring, that was it. <laughs> yeah, it, it did just, get me sleepy, but I'm back. Talk about something sexy. He was like a, like when, you know, once in a while you leave a, like you leave one of those candles out in the sun. And they just will. Yeah, yeah, it's like you throw that party, it's out on the picnic table, and then the next day it comes out. And just... We'll have to talk about it on the break, though, Art. All right. Okay. All right. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Everybody, there's the show. Godsmack in here tomorrow night. I want to thank uh, dear, 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 dear friend Art for coming in. You can uh, look for Best of uh, Everclear coming out uh, soon enough. And uh, look for Art coming to a town near you. Probably with his acoustic guitar. Yeah, probably. Good times. <laughs> He'll be away. He'll be awake though when he arrives at your town. Oh come on! I looked All right, sleepy drive, a little bit. You drive bit. home with the window open. I don't want you I'm falling asleep home. on the wrong. Oh, I'm right. gonna just. He's going down here. I'm, I'm. I'm gonna cuddle up in the front seat like a big cat. <sighs> those out. are the big. Those are the good old days. Falling asleep in the car. Yeah. Isn't that true? Yeah. Now I just you get drunk and pass out, but you don't really fall asleep. No. Yeah. Too well, bad your dad can't carry you to bed, huh? Oh, my dad <sighs> barely get a fanny pack from the, the driveway into the house. <laughs> All right, we're, we're going to, yeah, if you put, like, a, a number two pencil in it, 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 it would stop it. Yeah. I couldn't do it. We'll take a uh, extendo break, and until next time, this is Adam Kroller for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. I was, t- tell him, Kristen. You're on the top of my list of older men to do. <laughs> <laughs> This has been Loveline. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Anne Engold. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.